In this video, I'm going to show you how you can light an indoor scene where someone is talking to the camera like this, whether it's for a YouTube video or an interview or anything like that, using only the light that's already in the ceiling. Just one light and that's already in the room. Let's do it. Yeah. <music> Greetings, fellow human. I hope you're having a fantastical day. My name is Baron. I make videos with photo and video tutorials as well as camera and camera gear reviews. So if you want to see any more of those, go ahead and hit subscribe and ring the bell. Bing. Oh yeah. So you might be wondering why you would want to use the light in the ceiling to light a scene. Why, why wouldn't you use other lights? So there's a couple of situations that, you know, might happen. One of those is you don't have any lights. Maybe you're just getting started or whatever, and you don't have any video lights at all. And this is a good way to get a nice looking shot without having any lights. Another situation where you might want to use this technique is if you're traveling and you don't want to carry all your lights with you, or you don't want to rent any lights when you're there, you can just get a good looking shot with the stuff you can carry with you. Or it could just be the best way to light the scene to create the kind of mood and imagery that you're looking for. Maybe you want it to look incredibly natural. It could happen. Now I'm going to show you two different techniques that you can do to shape the light that's in the ceiling already. Now, the first thing you need to know is it is not important on what kind of light it is that's in the ceiling. It doesn't matter if it's a light attached to a ceiling fan. It doesn't matter if it's one of these like flush light things or a little domey things, or if it's like with those fluorescent light tube things that's in an office building or whatever, it doesn't matter. But one thing to be aware of before you start shooting is the quality of the light that the ceiling light has. And what I mean by quality of light is it's color rendering. So you got to make sure that you're setting the white balance in your camera as good as you possibly can while you're shooting. So that way you don't have to manipulate colors and stuff too much in post. And if you have to do it too much, it might ruin the foot. And if for any reason you are unfamiliar with white balancing in your camera or what that means how to go about it, that sort of stuff. I did make a video about that a couple years ago. I'll put the little card thing up there and I'll put another link down there in the video pants. Okay, so before I show you that first setup, uh, let's talk about the few things that you do need in order to manipulate the light. And you can, doesn't have to be a ceiling light. You can use these tools to manipulate any light. And don't worry, none of these things are particularly expensive at all. The first and probably most important thing you're gonna need to do this is a five in one reflector. It is a key and essential tool for photographers and videographers alike. They generally cost between 20 and $25 for the standard sizes, but they do have larger sizes and smaller sizes. I say start with the standard size thing. I'll put a link for one that I would recommend most people have in their kit anyway. I'll put a link down there in the video pants. The other thing that you're gonna wanna pick up if you don't have it already is gaff tape. This stuff is amazing. It's like duct tape, but it doesn't leave sticky residue on anything. So you can stick it onto cameras. You can stick it onto ceilings and uh, walls and furniture, and it's not going to damage anything. Now, the third and fourth thing that I'm going to talk about, these are optional, but they are things that you will not regret having. The third thing are clampy clamps little clampy things you can I'll put a link down there if you want to pick up some of the ones that I might recommend however you can get these at any hardware store sometimes at dollar stores you can get little cheap little hand clamps and clamp things to all kinds of things and they're amazing and they're cheap and you will never regret regret and you will never regret having a ton of clamps go get some clamps. And the fourth thing that is 100% optional for this is a light stand, a inexpensive lightweight light stand. And you can get those as low as 20 bucks uh, from most places. Again, I'll put links for all this stuff down in the video pants, but that's actually optional. You don't actually need that. And I'll show you some options. If you don't want to use the light stand like I did, you can use like a chair. I'll show you how that works. It's gonna be awesome. So the first method that I'm gonna show you is probably my favorite because it is the most natural looking. It takes what the room looks like to the eye and it just makes it look better on camera, but still looks like that room. Very natural, you can use it in even dramatic scenes if you, you know, going for that very naturalistic thing, you know, whatever you wanna use it for. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open up your five-in-one reflector, and you're gonna to wanna to take the reflecty stuff off, so you're left with the center part of the reflector, which is actually a diffuser. It's a big diffusing panel, which makes any light source that you shine through it 
that much bigger and softer, which is what we're going for. Now, in my case, I was using light stands, so I could take the diffusing part of the 5-in-1 reflector and clamp it to the light stands, and then I'm raising it up, see, here it's all the way up right directly underneath that overhead light. Now you're going to want to leave maybe a foot or two between the light and the reflector because you want the light to have some space to fill out that reflector. So the light source is going to be bigger rather than focused right in the center. It's not going to do as much good that way. So you want to give it some space, probably about a foot. Maybe if you can get two feet and it's still out of the shot, do two feet, whatever, whatever experiment you'll figure it out now like i mentioned if you don't have the light stands all you need is a couple of cardboard boxes some of that gaff tape i was telling you about you can tape the cardboard boxes to the ceiling and then clamp the five in one reflector on those boxes that's going to give you the space that you need underneath the light to really fill out that five in one reflector see you don't even need the light stand. now of course in my case i didn't want to have the light stands in the shot so i adjusted the camera a little bit so that i could make sure that the stands were out of frame and i still had a decent enough composition where you could see part of the room as well as the subject now already we can see a pretty big difference from when we had the direct light from the bulb we hadn't done anything that looks that looks pretty that looks pretty bad actually and then just by adding that diffuser and softening everything out that's allowing the light to wrap around things better and softens everything up it looks quite a bit better already but the light on my face is not quite bright enough you can see that the background is brighter than me so anybody who's looking at this image they're immediately going to look at the brightest part of the scene which is the background and you don't want that you want them to be looking at the foreground which in this case is my amazing face so in order to get some light onto my face we're going to reflect some of that light from the ceiling into my face and in this case i'm using a foam board just one of these things you can pick up at like the dollar store it's just phone it's, you can use poster board you can use a bed sheet you can use anything that is white it will reflect light but in this case i'm using a foam board i clamped it to another light stand right next to my face and moved it till there was a, uh, some light on my face and as you can see it is reflecting quite a bit more light into my face so that now i'm not nearly as dark as i was in the previous shot if you look at this area right behind my head that's very very bright up there and it looks it still looks a little uneven and i think we can fix that so the next step is to refine the shot even more kind of put on the finishing touches now the light on my face in this shot is a little flat so we want to try and add a little bit more dimension to it and we also want it to stick out from the background a little bit more while keeping the background looking natural so the first thing i want to tackle is to get a little bit more light and a little bit more like definition and contrast into my face so the foam board that i was using did reflect a lot of light into my face but it's not doing the job that i need i need a little bit more light so i'm going to grab the leftover part from my five in one reflector the part that we didn't zip over the diffusing part and i'm going to take the silver reflecty side and i'm actually going to throw it over the foam board that I had already set up. So the silver part of the reflector is quite a bit more reflective, so it's going to throw a lot more light onto my face than just the white foam board was, but we are going to lose a little bit of that softness. And in this case, I think that's going to be okay because it's going to add more contrast and definition in. The next thing I want to tackle is that bright spot behind my head. So I'm going to actually flag off that light. And when I say flag off the light, it means I'm just going to block the light from hitting that area. Now you can use anything to flag off light. You can use a blanket, you can use a piece of black poster board, probably black over a white poster board because you don't want to create more light. The black will keep it from, trust me. In this case, I have a multi-purpose flag reflector that I made out of tin foil and duct tape. I use it for a multitude of purposes. It always stays in my bag. You can make one if you want to. It's pretty simple, but you can also use whatever anything would work to block that light. So I'm gonna use gaff tape to actually tape the flag up onto the ceiling and block that light in the corner behind my head. I'm not choosing to block too much light, but depending on the look that you're looking for, you could actually block almost all the light from the background if you wanted to. But in this case, I still wanted this scene to look very natural. So I chose just to flag off a tiny bit in that corner. And there you go, this is the final image. So the reflective side of the 5-in-1 reflector is actually throwing quite a bit more 
light onto my face and it is adding a little bit more definition. We did lose some of that softness, but in this case, it looks pretty dang good. And in this corner up there, it's now flagged off that light and it looks a little bit darker, but it still looks very natural. So as you can see from the previous shot, where my face was flat and that was a little bit too bright back there in the in the background, this new version looks pretty dang good. So let's recap method one. We started with just the bare light directly above the subject, and that looks pretty horrendous. Then we put the diffuser over that to soften the light out in the entire room. It's starting to look a little bit better. And in the next shot, we added some more light onto the face by reflecting it off of a foam board. And that looked better, but it's still not as good as it could be. So in the last one here, we actually flagged off the a little bit on the background and used the reflector to shine additional light into my face, causing the final image to look actually pretty dang pleasing, considering that the only light that we used was just the regular run of the mill cheapo light that's in the ceiling of my office. So the second method that I'm gonna show you is quite a bit easier to achieve than the first one. In this method, we're not gonna diffuse the overhead light at all. We're actually going to use the harshness of that light to separate us from the background. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is position the subject directly underneath the light, slightly forward towards the camera. Now the light that is actually falling onto the subject is actually causing a rim light on their shoulders and the top of their head, kind of like a hair light, rim light thing. It's separating them from that background. But as you can see, you can't see their face. They're all dark and the background is far brighter than the foreground, which is again, not what we're looking for. So let's pull out that five in one reflector. This time we're going to put the silver reflecty side on the reflector itself. And in my case, I used a light stand to position it as close to the subject as you possibly can while staying out of the frame. That way you can maximize the amount of light that's actually going to be onto the subject. And in my case, I needed to play with the angle a little bit. So since I have it up on a light stand, I used a second clamp on the back of the stand to push it forward at the correct angle. And if you don't have a light stand, not to worry, it's probably pretty, fair to say that you're going to have access to a chair. So you can just take the five in one reflector and prop it up on the chair at the appropriate angle as close to the subject as possible. See, no light stand required. And because we didn't diffuse the light in this method, there's going to be a lot more light that is uh, capable of, you know, reflecting up into the subject's face. In this case, it's me because I can't pay for a model quarantine, yo. And because there is more light, there also means there's a lot of contrast. And the right side of my face here is actually a little bit in shadow. We need to fill that in, or I feel like I need to fill it in. That's subjective. Keep in mind that all lighting things are pretty much subjective. If you don't want to fill that in and you like the look, then by all means, keep it that way. But in this case, I want to fill it in a little bit more so it's going to soften it a little bit. It won't seem as harsh. So once again, I'm going to use the foam board that I used in the previous method. I'm going to put it again on a light stand. But like I said, if you don't have a light stand, just use another chair or tape it to the wall. I don't know, whatever. I believe in you. Now we can see a pretty distinct difference from just having the overhead light. And now we've added the light onto the subject here and softened it out with that second little foam board thing. It actually looks pretty decent, but the background is far too bright. This method is already not going to give me the natural kind of look as the first method. So there's no need for us to try and be subtle with how we are actually cutting the light into the background. I took the same flag that I used in the last method and I taped it right up against the light itself on the ceiling. This is going to completely block the light from reaching the background. So all of the background is going to be in shadow or just quite a bit darker. And that's going to put us here, which is actually a really nice looking shot. Subject is separated from the background. They are obviously the main focal point of the shot and the light on the subject is not too bad. It's a little bit harsher than what I would normally want to go for, but it actually looks good and I don't think anyone's going to complain. So for a quick recap of method two here, we started out with just the bare light and we moved the subject slightly in front of it, closer to the camera. The next thing we did was add the silver reflector to put light into the face of the subject and a little bit of fill light from the phone board as well to even that out. And the final thing we did was flag off the light from the background to make sure that the subject is getting all the light 
and attention. So that's two methods, but I'm gonna give you a bonus. If you have a five in one reflector or you're picking one up now by using the link in the video pants, thank you for that if you do that. But if you have one, you probably noticed that there is a silver reflecty side and there's also a gold reflecty side. Now, if you use the silver reflecting side, it is going, the color temperature that you're using is gonna stay the same as the light that is being reflected and that sort of thing. It's not really gonna mess with it enough that you would notice anyway. But if you put the gold reflecty side on and set everything up exactly the same, it looks pretty horrible to be honest. See how it makes the face look all like weird and it's crazy. But here's a fun trick. If you adjust your white balance, to the gold of the reflector, it's going to make everything in the background turn blue. In all of the previous shots, I had the white balance set to 3800 Kelvin, which was what was appropriate for the overhead light here in my office. And then when I used the golden reflector, I adjusted the white balance to the gold on my skin. That changed the Kelvin temperature all the way down to 2600 Kelvin, which is quite a bit cooler than before. Now the light over the overhead light hasn't changed any. So what that means is because it's a cooler color temperature, everything behind us is now going to be colder. Blue makes it look blue. Now do be careful if you're not really good with color grading and that sort of thing. It's not going to be perfect skin tones because you're you're throwing colored light onto the skin. So you can make it look pretty good like as you can see here, but it's not going to be perfect. So it may be something that you want to try, but if you can't make the skin tones look great, you might want to avoid that and just stick with the silver side. Now look at the shot. Once I color corrected it in camera, it's very similar to the shot that you're seeing right now. And I specifically set up this shot to be way too complicated than necessary. For instance, in the shot that you're seeing right now, I have my main key light through a giant diffuser to soften the light on my face. I also have a light directly above me, which is my hat light. It's just, or if I had hair, it would be a hair light. But in this case, it is a hat light. And then I also have a kicker light or rim light directly behind me. I also have a practical that's back there behind the uh, computer screen. And then over here, I have another light with a gel on it throwing a little bit of blue on here and I have adjusted the gel so there's a gradient, a slight, very slight gradient on the back wall. So I have five lights to make this shot look like this. Now I could make it look better by tweaking them even more, but I didn't want to spend that much time. But this is what happens a lot is we have a whole bunch of lights. We use a whole bunch of lights and we get a result. However, in this shot looks really similar to the shot that we just did using the golden side of the reflector. It looks very, I, it looks pretty dang close and I only used the, the overhead light in the room. The point that I'm getting at here is that you don't actually need to have a million lights in a scene to make the scene look good. In fact, sometimes you might wanna take some of those lights out. It might make the shot more interesting or force you to think a little bit better to create a better result with what you do have. If you like this video, do the thing where the thumb goes up. If you did not like this video, do the thing where the thumb goes down. And all of us thumbs uppers are going to just hang out in the corner and we're just gonna mock you. We're gonna be like, ew, look at the thumbs down or what a jerk. And if you enjoy videos about lighting tips and tricks and stuff like that, I actually made this video right here where I show you how you can use your iPad as the only light source in a video product shoot. It's pretty cool. And then there's there's that video, it's down there too. That one's awesome. Like all of the, the, those are both, you can watch them both, I won't say no. And then you can take your camera and you can go make something awesome. Yeah.